and respect, lessons from protest and political dialogues. It was a sad and bizarre sight in Brewa, Madhya Pradesh, where two women were half buried by gravel while protesting road construction, highlighting the dangers faced by protesters and the urgent need for safety measures during demonstrations. Meanwhile, in Nigeria, Senate President Akpabio's remarks to Senator Natasha Akoti underscore the importance of maintaining respectful dialogue within legislative bodies. Lessons to draw from this. First, protesters' um, safety needs to be ensured, promote respectful dialogue, and address underlying issues in protests. So protest is all about the issues, not the protest exactly. itself. Yeah. If the protest exactly. cannot address the issue, then there is no need yeah, for protest. You know, yeah. saying um, from the Indian perspective, you know, domestic violence is like prevalent in that um, country where um, women Gender are being violence, yeah. raped, mm -hmm. abused. Just imagine they were having a protest, they ignored them, they did that on purpose and poured the gravel on them. They were half buried. And it was more like um, detrimental to their health because the women were fainting, they were trying to, and uh, they were re um, reviving them and all that because it was all over the place and on the internet. And occurred last week actually. I don't know whether you followed the story. Yeah, so, and it's gender-based violence. Gender-based violence. So, um, I would like to know our takes on this, like, especially considering a women's right and women's place in the world. I think um, India suffers from violence against women. Mm -hmm. It's yes. prevalent because of how women are regarded. And this is not too far-fetched from how women are regarded in most places. Now, the backstory to this is that this women lease this land. And of course, uh, subsistence farming, it's very it's there in Rampant India. There, yes. It's rampant right. there because a lot of the people there are poor. Yeah. So you just lease a land. So I think they had a problem with an area father or a family member who said, do not touch this land, it's our land. So whilst the mother and the daughter, or the family, because they have the same surname, were there protesting that they should not cut this road through the land, the guys with the tipper, the truck came. So why they were saying, no, you, they wanted to build a road across the land that they leased. So what the people said, Pour the sand on them if they do not mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. And this, this is what happens here a lot because people don't have respect for women and for poor people. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that if this set of individuals were men mm -hmm. and poor, a Dalit, the, the Dalit is a lower caste in India. They have four, the Brahmin on top and the Dalit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be the toilet cleaners and whatever. Sleep. And in India, not slaves, in India, the caste that you're born under, you're not expected to rise above it. Mm -hmm. So just stay, stay there. Stay there. Wow. So I'm guessing these women are one of those, but they have to be. Pour sand on them and then let them go. Uh, one fainted while she was there because they were half buried in the sand. And then before the people raised the alarm and uh, they called the police. Now, depending on who is mm -hmm. supporting the police, justice may never come what you need to go is how are women faring under narendra modi's um, in the bjp and you and you find that um the bjp's party is all about humanity and you ask yourself what is the space for humanity under this and um rewa under uh, something pradesh it's controlled by the bjp so because this has gained such global momentum, we're going to see that they're probably going to come around. But I'm saying that even here, in Igbo land, at least I know that for free, women are not even supposed to inherit land. So if in a family where they have only daughters or a man dies and then there's land, you find that the men in that community or what will come and torture the woman to say, go, women do not own land in this place. So I'm happy that you said, you know, join that example from India. I'm just trying to say that it is happening right here in Africa and in most places. So I think it's for the community um, and the government at large to make sure that the rights of women 
are protected, protected yes. no matter the level where, where they yes, are. Yes, it's more like the party you not know, practicing what they preach. Yeah. No, they are not protecting women. No, no, they are not. Women are being abused and violated, even raped on trains yeah, in yeah. India. Women yeah. are being uh, abused and raped everywhere. There everywhere. are people who will tell you, I will. It's more than common in India. It's that like is the, the same way they are going to do. say that about us. Because that's just it because yeah. the media attention is on them. But let's, let's, go, let's go to this angle here because you raise something. Aside from this issue of women protesters, you said something about caste. The fact that that caste system still exists in India is a problem. I want you to tell you that we have caste system in Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. But then I'm saying it that is a problem. Even it is, it is a problem. Humanity is more important than this. Yes, and in the way where, which again uh, alludes to the fact that you know this is primarily tilted uh, against women, in a world where we have, as Nigerians, I'm saying at least standing on, you know the law in Nigeria, we have two genders, male and female. female yes. You find that it's always the men who have the upper hand in most things. They say, who is talking? Yeah, it's a woman. They, there's a cultural practice in Igbo land, in some parts of Igbo land, before Ohaneza will come after me. Um, if 20 women are here from age 10 to 100, the woman will not be allowed to break the collar knot. They need to bring a two-year-old boy. Yeah to yeah. first touch it and not yes. you know before yes. so so that's yes. how to show you that women are not really expected to yes. do a lot of things yes. some yes. things yes. yes some yes. things yes. are just and it's common in for other men tribes, in one way or another in, uh, yes so now, that, that's, now, that's another issue point. i think we should not neglect is the issue of protest mm -hmm. now you were saying something that protest is about the message mm -hmm. listening yeah. to the message yeah. is feedback. Yeah. feedback now we're in nigeria where this from August 1, people are clamoring that there should be protests. Mm. And some other persons, the reasons, presidency is saying, please, reasons why don't people, protest. Um, sorry to cause you, reasons, there must be a reason to protest. Yeah. People don't just wake up from so their rooms. My, my point is, to protest. I, think, I think the Nigerian masses, the government, we are being distracted from what is the issue. The issue is not about protests yeah. or no protests. How about we focus on, on the issue? issue. Is what that is way the issue? government can talk, dialogue with different people stakeholders about, okay, That's yeah, we issue. acknowledge the hardship but this is what we are trying we've we'll been doing and this is what we're we trying to achieve and then let's see how to go so as to reduce the there risk is, of uh, violent infiltration and um, there is a slogan that when diplomacy fails war ensues mm. that's what happens most sure. times mm -hmm. the people have had it to yeah, this place that they are no longer having it you see yeah things are just mm -hmm. moving without regulation no price regulation nothing even if there are committees or Process or set, uh, set up for that, it's not functioning. Yeah. Mm. We are not seeing it. Is it not people that work in those it's Paris still people. See, my problem with protests and all that, but I again, having said, I have a problem with the control of it. NSAS protest is rife in our memories, and I think when the government thinks I about that, you know, and I, I was right in the midst of some of the protests and i saw the looting that happened after the protesters the official had gone or when the wahala started the main protesters left now there's a saying that people go mad in herds mm -hmm. and they come back to their senses one by yeah. one but not everybody there are people who are disgruntled fair enough things are terribly bad i mean yes. Sometimes when you sit back and you're almost doing rationing in your homes, you're like, how did we get here? But we know the corruption is there. The bad leadership is there. The lack of integrity. The flagrant abuse of power and looted wealth. We know a lot of people that government has sent to... to um, EFCC, blah, blah, blah. They just get a tap on the wrist and they go. And then you, you open the papers, you see somebody was sent to jail for stealing chicken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can direct their looting directly to hunger. Mm -hmm. But my point is somebody owns that chicken that you stole. What is going to happen to that person? So if people want to protest, now we live in a country where people still depend on daily pay. I want to guarantee you that if we embark on this now, the people who earn their money daily, 
and we have a 10-day protest, how are they going to pay those people? Some people have not recovered from the looting. And again, protest is brief. I went to Unilag. So when you call a looter majors, we are here, you know, and we had a reason, we had a purpose, and we could, we were limited. We could talk to ourselves like, you know, don't destroy this, don't destroy that. When the buses were destroyed during NSAS, what happened after that? If you came out the next, you see people on the streets. Nobody to carry them. Nowhere. Shops were destroyed. How did those people replenish? Then when we finished destroying these things, we now say government, uh, we need funds and resources to build these things back. Which? Yes. So if we can have tactical ways of yeah, doing right. this. Expressing yes. Those. It's the looting that everybody is afraid yeah. of. Is the we were talking of rape earlier. Is the looting, the raping, the maiming, by the murder, the, by the murder? Uh, how many policemen were killed? How many civilians mm -hmm. were killed the last time? They are not coming back. We keep it's saying like Kenya, 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 Kenya. Yeah. Kenyans, a lot of Kenyan, uh, they've died, and so people are regrouping and trying to follow up this protest in another way. We can even protest with integrity. Henceforth, when we are driving, we are going to drive on the right side of the road. Better. We will not right litter thing. our environment. Right kind of yes, if we see a government official driving on the road the wrong way, we will oh, match no. up and say, yeah. no. So we can actually do these things in a better way. My own is, it's that looting and that wanton destruction by people and who feel yes yes so if if you are throwing stones or whatever at a military man or somebody with a gun what is it going to do so and at the end of that more problems so my own protest is i did a looter i will not stop someone who's my age then not to do a looter but i can stand here and tell you i did not destroy anything and That's you will not therefore encourage such but you will rather encourage continuous dialogue with you. At this point, I think it's Did better than... Um, what's your take on it? Okay, so no just like, you know, you said so far, addressing the root cause. So um, Elijah talked about, you know, having a dialogue, right? So if, you know, our leaders and then can come out and, you know, be accounted, right? What are you doing to address this issue? Because just like you said, there is an issue. And that's why people are, you know, fed up. They've got it has gotten into this place, and then they want to come out to express themselves. So, if our government can, our leaders can address the root cause, and then come out to let us know that okay, this is what we are doing to address this. This is what we are doing to address. This. I think it would help to, you know, um, you know, it would help to reduce. Is it is it reduced now, or is it's help to address? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To reduce how. You know, people feel as this is every action precisely. Yeah. And this is the point where I was going to say that earlier this week, uh, the Minister of Information, or last week, the Minister of Information and Culture, uh, Minister, no, Minister of Information and National Orientation, that is Mohammed Idris, right? Mm -hmm. He was addressing the concern that the youth should not come out and seeing those things. I've spoken with the president, he's assuring us. This is the time I'm going to. This is the time I'm going to call on. This is beyond assurance. Yeah, this is this no longer. Come out yourself and address. Game of yes, yes. Let's see more from you. Young, young men and young ladies, please calm down. Mm -hmm. yep. This is what we are this doing. Is doing. This is the actions. The actions we're going to take to address this issue. It's 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 the case of the knee jerk reaction. Oh, they are going to do this, and then this is what we're going to do. The government has the government has their chance to do the right thing. I must say that I think the government is really trying. But the thing is about, um, is it medicine after death? Mm. Or medicine while uh, uh, whatever? I believe that um, if we give the government a peaceful environment, they will continue. You can see that, seriously, you can see that the man, mm -hmm. um, look at, okay, look at the president. What else does he have? to do other than leave a good name no what else if niger disintegrates under him is this what his ambition was all about no. no so i think on his own he has good intentions but what he promised us was that he was going to have a cabinet of people around him 
that are going to be people of integrity. So I would ask him, sir, are you looking at the people working with you? Are you, can you stand up and say, I have put the right pegs in the right holes? So if they're just making mouth, you know, just paying lip service to it, there's going to be a problem. People need to see that truly um, he's walking his talk. His policies look good, but we just want to see that translation from just uh, talk to action. He promised us that he would deliver. So, uh, Mr. President, we are waiting for the fruit that you are be the seed you've been planting to germinate mm -hmm. and, and take root. We understand that he needs time, but I also want to call the leaders of this protest to make sure. We've had Gandhi conduct peaceful protests. We've had um, Martin Luther King Jr. conduct peaceful protests. And it worked. It, it worked. You will always continue to point at these men in history for leading peaceful protests and the results that came from it. So if uh, the leaders of this protest will say, my people, don't burn, don't destroy anything. What we destroy, who are we affecting? It's us now. Those big boys up there, it doesn't touch them. They'll continue to speak English for but us. As, as much as possible that I like the fact that protest is part of fundamental right. Mm -hmm. But in my own opinion, considering what has been happening, even what happened recently in Kenya, there's every, just like what the Nigerian intelligence and the uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, law enforcement agency were saying that uh, they are, there is a very high probability that this protest will be hijacked if it does happen <laughs> for political gains and yeah. other, yeah. Yes. other reckless gains. Mm -hmm. I don't think as much as possible. I'm not saying that I'm trying we to tell people not to. Right? We, can't, we can't decide for them, but mm -hmm. we are saying that as much as possible, let's promote peace. peaceful protest. Peace and dialogue first. Peace okay. and dialogue. It's not about the protest. Mm -hmm. Protest or no protest, the issues will still be there. Let's promote mm -hmm. dialogue and continuous engagement on how to solve this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, am I supposed to? Just this one. Okay. Okay. So um, with that peaceful, um, peaceful dialogue, you you are advocating for peaceful dialogue, and everyone is just continuous saying that engagement, yeah. continuous engagement. And you were saying um, protests is not um, the byproducts like casualties and all that. Yes, it's true because we've seen these things happen before and it's not really very good. The outcomes mm -hmm. really did not turn out to be. No, we're what talking we expected. hunger. Ten days of people yes, not going out that on the day. day. Most Nigerians yes. are living by the day. Ten days of yes. terror in Somalia, where it's, people without yes. in people's houses. And, and, yes. looting, and even killing them for yeah. their properties, for, for their for food. For food, food basically. Eat, to eat basically. So yes, we should think about dialogue peaceful dialogue and um, peaceful ways to um, resolve this issue. Next, we have Inikpi after the break. You stay tuned. <laughs> 